right. Hiking up this dirt road to East Ord Mountain, 6,168 feet. That really rugged peak in the center there. But right now, I'm on Bureau of Land Management Road 6657. And as I'm hiking towards East Ord Mountain, which is my goal today, I am right now at an elevation of about 3,005, 3,600 feet. So this is high desert. Got a long way to go to get up there, that's for sure. Distance wise, not so much. Elevation gain wise, yes. But as I'm below 4,000 feet, I am in a land of low to, I want to say mid to high desert flora. Here we go. This is what this is basically the trademark of the desert. This is creosote bush, Laria tridentata. This plant is very, 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 very much the sign of the desert. It's found at very low desert elevations, sometimes below sea level, and then I've seen it as high as about 4,000 feet near Red Rock Canyon State Park. Not the Red Rock Canyon Park near Vegas, I'm talking about the one in Kern County, California. I've been past that many times on the way to and from the Sierra Nevada, and I've seen creosote bushes about as high as 4,000 feet because the road gets close to that elevation. Um, it's basically the indicator of the desert. This is the Mojave Desert. But here's another plant that's common, but it's, I guess it's fairly scattered in distribution as opposed to creosote. This is the Mojave Yucca, Yucca scadigera. It's very common around here. All those little stumpy things off in the distance, those are Mojave Yuccas. Here's a nice Mojave Yucca right here. Uh, it is closely related to the Joshua tree, Yucca brevifolia, but the Joshua tree is much more upright, usually upright, and taller and has much shorter leaves, hence the name Brevifolia, which is short leaf in Latin. Yucca scadigera, the Mojave yucca, one way you could tell is generally by its shorter stature, obviously. Uh, here's another telltale sign, in case you're in an area where both happen to be growing. And these little filaments, these little bristles, uh, off the side of the leaf blade. That is a telltale sign of Mojave Yucca. Joshua trees do not have that. And again, the leaves are much shorter. Well, here's more examples of creosote bush right here. Sometimes creosote bushes can get quite large. I've seen them up to almost 10 feet tall, very wide. And you notice that they're relatively uniformly spaced apart. There's a theory that the plant essential oils secrete are secreted and it prevents other plants from taking root. I mean, it's not foolproof, obviously, because there are grasses and forbs underneath, but it's to try to keep other competing shrubs from taking over. Like this shrub right here, you see one right next to this creosote, it's a lot smaller and stunted as opposed to these right here. So you can tell I'm not a complete sage on uh, Mojave Desert Flora. I do know that that plant's in the sunflower family, and I believe it's in the genus Ambrosia. But I'm not an expert on Mojave flora, because I haven't spent that much time hiking in the Mojave Desert to get that knowledge base that I do get when I'm hiking in the, the pine and fir forests of the San Gabriels or San Bernardinos down here in Southern California. So I do have a lot to learn. 
and should have brought my flora with me, my Mojave Desert Wildflowers book, but didn't quite pack it with me. If we climb a little bit higher, we're going to start seeing some more Choya cactus. And those are in the genus Cylindropuntia. You can see a couple here and there. You can see the teddy bear Choya. I believe that's Cylindropuntia bigalovii. I haven't really spent much time differentiating those. There is one though. There's one species of Choya that will stick out like a sore thumb. And I've yet to come close enough to one to point it out. It's Pencil Choya. Cylindropuntia ramosissima. Where I got stuck last week, I was right by where there were quite a few of them growing. And I believe I snapped a few pictures of them, but obviously since I'm walking that way, I'm going to come across them again to be able to point them out. The teddy bear choyas and the other closely related ones have thicker stem joints. and. I saw one just a second ago. I was going to try to point it out. Those ones, the stems on them are thicker. Of course, now that I want to point one out, see, they are here. Then, Pencil Choya, as the name suggests, has a relatively thin stem and very sharp, very sharp, long spines that protrude from the stems. Those ones will hurt. I've seen them a little bit way, a little bit ways up the road. Wish I would see one now. In fact, here's one right here. Here's Cylindra puntia ramosissima. This is the pencil choya. It's a shrubby cactus, generally upright. Uh, some of the ones I saw actually had a few well-defined trunks. And you can see the stems or the, the joints are very thin and the spines are very thick and menacing looking. It's a beautiful cactus. Beautiful cactus. It's a very neat looking plant. But as for the, the teddy bear choyas, you'll notice they're a lot thicker. Here's a better specimen of Cylindropuntia ramosissima right over here. As this one is even taller and thicker and denser. And again, very thin stems. So this is it, Pencil Choya, Cylindropuntia ramosissima. Beautiful shrub. And cacti, while they are succulents, they do form wood. In fact, here's an old cactus right here. I'm not exactly sure the identification because it's old and dead. But while they do have very fle lots of fleshy, lots of fleshiness in them. They do form wood. This is actually wood. The xylem does form wood in the plant. So they, like I said, they do form wood. But it's kind of like a frame. It's more of a frame for them to grow their fleshy stems around. And here's a plant I saw a lot last time I was here. This is desert tick seed or desert coreopsis. This is Leptocine bigalovii, formerly known as coreopsis. Bigalovii. See, it's a small daisy like flowers. It's in the sunflower family. In the leaves, kind of wiry lobed leaves, kind of give it away as being a tick seed. Um, 
I've seen a, I've seen maybe about three about three species of Liptocinae, which was formerly in the genus Coreopsis. If you go near Del Mar in San Diego County, there's the coastal one. That's uh, Leptocinae maritima, which is a coastal tick seed or whatever else. There's a million common names for it. And then there's one that forms a giant Dr. Seuss-like shrub or, or... Yeah, it was more of a shrub. It's uh, Leptocinae gigantea, as the name suggests, it's a giant. It has the same daisy-like flowers, but larger. And the leaves are very thin and thready, but again, much larger. And as opposed to desert tick seed, which is an annual, the a giant tick seed or giant coreopsis is a perennial. It's kind of like a sub shrub. I believe it might form some woody tissue, but I'm not sure. Never really examined the tissue of the plant, but. But in the summertime, it goes dormant. So you'll be passing by a bunch of stumpy plants with dead leaf masses on top of them with really thick stems. You're in a coastal area like on the Channel Islands or LA County coastline, you're probably looking at giant tick seed. So they go dormant in the summer, they look dead, but when the winter rains come, they sprout up. Uh, there's a desert tick seed, the one I keep showing you, little yellow sunflowers. They are animals. They die off. They'll probably be here for a few more weeks and then they'll die off. And then the seaside one, the one by Del Mar, Leptocine maritima, maritime, <laughs> that one is a perennial as well. Now back to the shrubs. There's a decent sized, decent sized uh, creosote right here. The leaves are kind of shiny because of the resin. That smoky smell, that smoky resinous smell, you're more than likely smelling creosote bush. One plant that kind of smells similar to it, and it's more of a, 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 a wash and streamside plant or in disturbed areas, it's uh, Baccarus salicifolia, subspecies salicifolia, which is mule fat much taller, much lankier, and the leaves are long and narrow. Um, I don't think I'm going to be seeing any of that today. But they both kind of have a very smoky, sometimes overpowering smell. And here we got another annual in the Borage family, the Borageanaceae. Here we got Fiddleneck right here. I believe this one is uh, Amsinkia tessellata, the desert, the desert variety of fiddleneck. Pretty nice looking plant. It's a very cheerful little flower. Flowers are really tiny. You got to get close to really get a look at them, but they're really neat. Well, I'm gonna keep hiking my way up. I mean, this is a very easy grade here gonna get really hardcore when I get to that, to the base of the mountain. So I am going to keep climbing and on my next video I'll be probably at the base of the peak. So I'm gonna keep hiking along this and then I'm gonna branch off on 6659, BLM 6659. And that'll be my route to get at least the base of the canyon that's going to take me up this mountain. Right. I'll see you along the way.